welcome back to the morning Tobago on Tobago updates viewers we are now being joined online by the Secretary of Education Research and Technology Ms. Arisha Hackett so a special good morning and welcome to you Ms. Hackett how are you doing this morning good morning Candice good morning Tobago and a special good morning to the principals in Tobago we have our annual principals conference this morning at Tobago Nutrition Cooperative down there in Canaan so very hectic morning for me Mm -hmm. Certainly, but we are really happy that you could at least spare a few minutes for us. But as we get into this okay. conversation, I just want to ask you, you know, about, you know, what's been happening where instituting the protocols at school are concerned because unfortunately we are seeing the um, rise again of COVID-19 cases as the virus continues to uh, mutate and evolve and so on. Um, so what's, what's happening? How are you going to roll out those protocols at our schools? All right. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to this. I want to say that this came out of us just knowing that between October and May, generally, in and out of the COVID period, we've had an upsurge of influenza. We call it the flu. And you know what happens every carnival period? Yeah, when we have so many visitors in and out of Trinidad and Tobago. So we always are in that preparation mode. However, after having conversations with the Secretary of Health, Wellness and Social Protection, Dr. Faith B. Israel, over the weekend and with the numerous calls I've been receiving as Secretary as well as the Administrator and School Supervision Unit and parents just very worried and concerned about, you know, the rise in, in the flu and the fact that we're having all these symptoms, these respiratory illnesses uh, presenting themselves, we took a proactive approach. So on Monday, I pulled together the Education District Health Unit, which we have a resident at DTEC. I pulled together all school supervisors, of course, the technical team, administrative team, and we even pulled the OSH officers and our project implementation unit manager. Uh, so we can have this meeting to speak to how we need to reactivate our infectious disease management plan, which, as you may be aware, was created when we had to return to that face-to-face -face modality in mm -hmm. April of 2022. And so we pulled that document out because we realized that with the passage of time, schools were just not utilizing. And I'm not only saying schools, the THA in general. We relaxed a bit, you know, we started not wearing the mask, not sanitizing as we should, not washing our hands as we should. And because the tech had invested so much into sanitizing equipment, and everything required to ensure that the spaces remain sanitary. We had to revert to that modality. So, uh, <laughs> internal memo between the school supervisor three and the principals of ECCE primary and secondary made its way into the, into the public space, and that's fine. It's no secret the division intended to put a public release out before the end of the week. But from that internal memo, you would see the school supervisor asking for principals to conduct an audit on the number of functional sinks available, the number of additional sinks required, the number of entry points to the school's compound and their current status, uh, the capacity and resources available at the school sick bay, if there's one at the school, and the list of sanitization and hygienic supplies required to reintroduce the necessary protocols. And that is because we realized that we at DIRTEC had to provide that support to ensure that our schools were up and running, to, especially at the entry points, so we can reintroduce those protocols. All right. And now, Tuta yesterday stated that they are a little bit concerned about the implementation as well as the enforcement because that takes a little bit of support for that to be uh, effective. Um, is that being looked at at this point in time? So I had a conversation with Mr. Roberts last night and I actually told Mr. Roberts, you know, there's very much uh, to be placed in communication. That meeting that we had on Monday, PIU, project implementation was actually at the table. And that is because if you read this internal memo, the audit is us saying, listen, we know that you do not have the resources to get this up and running on your own. We are responsible for you. Yeah, ultimately. And so listen, we're not just going to walk from Crown Point to Charlottesville at every school trying to figure out. You tell us what is required. So we're strategically coming to you to, uh, 
to enhance the resources you currently have or to provide if you do not or to increase probably if you need more. And so that meeting was a comprehensive one where we looked proactively at what was required to revert or to, to, to increase the, the approach and, and the outlook to us treating with infectious diseases. Not COVID per se, as you would be aware and appreciate Dr. Fabi Israel spoke to what's happening there, but we're speaking to all respiratory illnesses that would present themselves in and around this October to May period. So yes, I appreciate Mr. Roberts being concerned and Mr. Roberts as his role as a representative of teachers, but this concern is one that we also had around the table uh, in that meeting on Monday and we were very, very strategic in the approach and that is why this internal memo that was meant for principals to provide the relevant information so that our project team can go out and, and improve on resources. It was a bit uh, preliminary and, and, and it was a bit preemptive in the public space uh, for that type of response. So, uh, Mr. Roberts, <laughs> let not your heart be troubled. This secretary, very proactive one, very strong support team, and we are doing the necessary to get our schools up and running. We actually wanted uh, those systems up and running for next week. So this week would have been our preparation week. Yeah? And then for parents, though, how should parents now be handling the situation with their own children as they send their kids off to school? All right. So this infectious disease management plan, is more or less a guideline that the division developed, as I said before, that gives every procedure that needs to happen with students, that needs to happen with staff, even auxiliary staff on the compound, and uh, how parents should treat with uh, a, a child who may be presenting illnesses. Everything from the general guidelines how you uh, enter the school's compound, how uh, the teachers should be uh, looking for the signs and symptoms that will present themselves to uh, that period where you remain at home and you're returning to school where the education district health unit, uh, that's right there at the Division of Education at Dutch Fort. That fit to return test that you get right in house at our division. Everything is on that guideline. And so, what is going to happen is our principals are going to be given that updated version. We wanted to give it to them today in the principals conference. But I have Dr. Fate B. Israel and team just looking over and ensuring that it's very relevant for the actual circumstances we're being presented with at this time. And so, we're going to send those uh, guidelines out probably by tomorrow, soft copy in the first instance, and ensure that they all have a hard copy as well. And what we expect to happen, uh, our school supervision unit is going to ask that the principals pull their staff together, just as we did last year and year before, and go through the guidelines with them. Our school safety officers are also going to receive additional training, just as we did last year and year before, to have them ready, willing, and able to support our education district health unit. As it relates to parents, what we want to do, and I'm asking Dr. Faith B. Israel to assist with that, and she's already given me that commitment, is for us to have at least uh, the Prince, sorry, the PTA presidents present with us. So they, in their uh, PTA meetings, which they usually have at least once per month, they can relay the information as provided by the guidelines. And what I'm going to also do is ensure that the PTA presidents also have a copy of the guidelines. So it's a handbook. It's more or less your go-to uh, uh, in these circumstances and it provides you with everything required, all the frequently asked questions and so on, so we can work uh, together to combat these respiratory illnesses. All right. And now, as we still have you here on the line with us, um, Secretary Hackett, mm -hmm. could you give us an idea of just, you know, just the preparations for the sod turning tomorrow about the Scarborough <laughs> Secondary School and so on? I mean, it's certainly good news that we're seeing um, after so many years of the back and forth about what are we doing about having a new school for Scarborough Secondary. Um, so could you just give us an idea about just the, the, the stakeholder process and um, being able to finally decide on that location? <laughs> so Candice, you're taking away the shine of tomorrow. I thought you all would come tomorrow and go live oh. and then, you know, we'd be we'll able be to there speak tomorrow to everything. Well, that's okay. Yeah. 
but but listen it's an exciting time for us here in Tobago. If you would notice, our press release said the commencement of the development of a new Scarborough Secondary School. So what is going to happen tomorrow when we turn the sod and we put up that proposed site sign there? It officially marks the beginning of a long-awaited project for a smart school here in Tobago. As you would all be aware, I taught at Scarborough Secondary School for almost 10 years. And I mean, my father attended Scarborough Secondary School at that point in time when you called it Central School. And since then, Tobiagonians have been advocating for relocation because we knew that erosion and underwater issues we're having, uh, geographical issues and so on, that the school would not last at that location unless we were willing to spend a lot of money doing some coastal engineering and so on. And so We've had some challenges over the last couple of years, especially coming out of COVID, where we realized that the routine maintenance was not done as it should for that school. And we expended a lot of resources trying to at least ensure that health and safety issues uh, were addressed. And recently, some inclusive uh, pursuits were also made because we have students that are differently abled that attend that school. Mm -hmm. But all in that, we had to be very mindful that we didn't expend too many resources on that plant while trying to pool our resources together for a school that is going to take us almost to, let's say 400, sorry, 400 million, I almost said 400,000, 400 million dollars at least by the preliminary budgeting. And so what is going to happen, EID Court are going to be your project managers, they're going to send that RF uh, P out immediately after a certain exercise and we are going to have uh, make a call for the best engineers, the best contracting firms anywhere in the world. And I'm saying that we're going to make some provisions, of course, for what the labor would look like and the subcontracting would look like. But those procurement issues would be uh, spoken to tomorrow by Chief Secretary. But we want a state of the art school here in Tobago. The challenges we've had is obviously a school of $400 million, a $400 million budget with a development uh, allocation of in or around the $350 million. You understand that, that, is going to be, that is going to be, sorry, 250 million. That is going to be a challenge. And so we will always be at the end of us wondering how we're going to get the funding for such a school. Central government has given us a commitment and with the allocation that comes annually for the development of the school, we are just going to start the project. I've told now, my chief there? secretary, we You've heard was, me? was there any uh, was there full agreement on the current selection of the location yes well as you would be aware coming out of covid we did several consultations with stakeholders uh, internal stakeholders and uh, as you would also be aware on the side that i'm calling bacalet gardens in and around that enos development there were about 13 acres allocated for the development construction of scarborough secondary school and uh the Carib caribbean development bank who had initially uh had agreement to fund the school through way of loan uh when we did some testing Sting over there and so on, we realized that it was not the best place to have that new school developed. There were several concerns. Uh, the chief secretary would speak to them tomorrow. Uh, there were several concerns and, and, and the stakeholders were not very comfortable with that site. Fortunately for the Tobago House of Assembly, on the other side, calling it the Bacalet Park side, adjacent to the health center, the Tobago House of Assembly had already vested in it 29 point let's say 29.5 or so acres belonging to the THA that was originally supposed to be the site of the administrative complex, which did not happen. Site for the administrative complex and a new residence for the chief secretary. So it did not happen and the land was just there. Uh, all the necessary approvals, including soil testing and all of that was already done because there was supposed to be another project, as I said uh, before. And so, yes, Everything is, 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 is prepared to make that the most ideal site 
for the new Scarborough Secondary School. And so we're going to speak extensively to all of that tomorrow. We're going to speak to all the consultations we've had, the user brief, the design, the design build modality that we're going to engage our contractors in, the timeline that we're going to push the school for. But we also want uh, staff and students of Scarborough Secondary to understand that this is a priority for us. We don't ever want to wake up a day and, and hear something untoward occurring at the current side down there. Uh, at Shaw Park and we really really also want to urge Tobagonians that this is a project the Tobago House of Assembly is taking on hoping that the central government honors its commitment to fund the school we are going to do what we can do with the the, the alloc allocation we currently have but it definitely needs to be a commitment that is honored by central government and we're going to hold them to task for this all right. Well, I want to thank you so much, Secretary Hackett, for being on with us. It was certainly a pleasure hearing from you. And we are definitely looking forward to seeing what's happening tomorrow as you guys get ready to turn the sod for the Scarborough Secondary yeah. School. It is certainly a, a historic um, thing, especially after so, so many years after school of, long, after school you know, long. calling students, class students, calling for a new school, school and the need for a new yeah. school um, yes. location and so on. So thank you so much. You're welcome. See you tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Well, viewers, and that's how we end this morning's program. We certainly thank you for being with us. I mean, it is, we can't have GMT or any of our programs here on Tobago Updates without you. So your support and your viewership is continued to be appreciated. So um, thank you again. And have a safe and wonderful day. And we will see you tomorrow. Go, go, go. It's a